In Washington State's Skagit River Valley, a multi-million dollar stimulus fund project to restore habitat for endangered salmon, protect farmland from flooding, and create jobs is nearing completion. As part of our tracking of the impact and effects of federal stimulus money, FSRN's Martha Baskin reports. Taking two years to complete and creating 225 jobs, the project restored 60 acres of freshwater tidal marsh at Fisher Slough, a wetland and farmland complex in the Skagit River Delta. The slough is one of the last estuary habitats available to juvenile Chinook salmon before they head down the Skagit River and out to the ocean. So when those tides come in each day, twice a day, some of the lower level tides, they'll just fill some of these channels like this tidal channel right in front of us here. Chris Knight is a restoration project manager with the Nature Conservancy. He points to channels designed to restore what was here a hundred years ago. The water will move in here and they'll reshape themselves the way that they would naturally be existing. Old floodgates and dikes have been replaced, levees set back, and irrigation ditches, once barriers to salmon, relocated. There'll be chum and silvers and pinks that come and spawn in this area. So when they come down the Skagit River, heading out towards the salt water, they'll come into Fisher Slough. It's a spot for them to stop and rest and feed to get larger. Salmon that have had time to rear in an estuary have a 10% greater chance of returning to spawn. Two years ago, the National Oceanic and Atmosphere Administration received $167 million from the American Recovery and Reinvestment Act to restore coastal habitat and simultaneously help jumpstart the economy with jobs. 22 states received the money. Washington State's Nature Conservancy received a little over $5 million about two and a half million more from state agencies and private donors provided work for engineers, scientists, and construction workers. Andy Connor is with Interwest Construction. It's kept 50 jobs within our, just our group, for the last two seasons. I mean, these projects don't happen without the stimulus money. The Fisher Slough Restoration Project was born out of conflict and long-standing tension between those committed to restoring estuary habitat for juvenile salmon and those committed to protecting farmland. Eight years ago, a farmer who owned the land challenged the restoration community to create a project that would benefit both. The farmer isn't talking to the media these days, but Alan Rosima with Skagitonians to Preserve Farmland is. It was really, really tough because the old paradigm had been kind of a zero-sum game, single species management or single resource issue type management. And for a long time, thou shall never mix the projects together. Rosima says urban sprawl, second homes, development and water pollution have threatened productive farmland for decades. Farms in the Skagit Valley, known nationwide for tulips, ornamental bulbs, potatoes, and berries, are uniquely interdependent because farmers share land in order to rotate crops. If floods or development takes land out of production, it disrupts the whole cycle. Again, Alan Rosima. The farmers are worried that they're approaching this tipping point, that one of these years, that last 100 acres, is some farmer's going to drop off and not have a piece of farmland to farm on. In nearby La Conner, Bob Hart runs a farm that grows nursery stock, small grain, cattle, and hay. His family has been farming here since the Civil War. Hart hopes the millions spent to restore Fisher Slough will keep land from being flooded, but he isn't convinced. We have spent hundreds of millions of dollars in Puget Sound Base in the last 25 years. We should have, after all that time, had some real rock-solid results. This is what we did, and this is how it worked. Some understand Hart's skepticism, including Jacques White, reached by phone. White is a biologist with Long Live the Kings, a nonprofit salmon recovery group. He's a strong advocate of estuary restoration for both salmon as well as migratory corridors for birds. Although the water that comes into Fisher Slough will be fresh water, says White, other slough projects in the Skagit Valley have seen tide gates fail, resulting in saltwater intrusion into farmland. If you can do a demonstration project that has sort of triple bottom line, economy, ecology, and equity, in other words, you don't damage the surrounding farm activities, you manage water better so you address flooding issues, and you provide effective habitats for fish, that's a good thing. But it's a fine line. According to American Farmland Trust, farmland in the Skagit Valley is down 33% since 1950. 
while land converted to farms and development has resulted in a 73% loss of historic tidal wetlands, says the Nature Conservancy. The loss of estuary and freshwater tidal habitat is one of the biggest factors limiting Chinook recovery. One of the triple bottom lines the Fisher Slough Restoration Project hopes to address. Martha Baskin, FSRN, Seattle.